Wow. Let me just say, not posting on YouTube for a few weeks feels like an eternity. And I know I need to get back to my channel because my 10 subscribers that actually watch my videos are counting on me. And I miss you guys. But yeah, this feels awkward now. Like I'm rusty and with everything that's come out, like where do I even begin? And then it hit me. Why not do a catch up video? Yeah, like the whole Stella got her groove back thing? That thing, yeah. Except I'm banging out reviews instead of banging out Tay Diggs? Yeah, dude, let's freaking do this. The reviews, not Tay. Hey, Tay. Spiral. Movie review. Spiral is the... It's a Saw sequel. A reboot? That thing, they've done it a few times. That Yeah. Now, as a horror movie buff who's really cool with gore, I'm a fan of the first Saw movie. I thought it was different and super clever. Unfortunately, I must admit, I am not a fan of torture porn, which is what the majority of sequels have kind of felt like to me in this series. And yeah, the huge, like, torture set pieces just seem kind of silly and over the top. That said, I do appreciate these films have a fan base. So don't go all keyboard warrior on me now. It's cool. And Spiral did look like it just might be that, like, much-needed fresh take. And after watching it, I could definitely tell you it's different. Yeah. Chris Rock, I'm a fan. And in Spiral, he does what he does best in movies. Play himself. Maybe a little too much here? Don't get me wrong, he opens up with like this Forrest Gump skit that I thought was totally awesome. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. As he breaks into these like stand-up comedy moments out of nowhere. Do I look like a fucking Jamaican man? Maybe it's the way he delivers the jokes. Do I smell like jerk sauce? It's Chris Rock. Me no want no partner. Not Detective, whatever the guy he's playing. And yeah, those moments took me out of the movie. And because of this, there are times that Spiral feels like... Like Chris Rock is hosting a Saturday Night Live. And this is a Saw skit with him and SNL members. Yes. As for the torture devices and scenarios here, I actually miss the ones from the sequels. Yeah. Side note, I kept wanting to call this guy the Tiffany's killer because each box he leaves behind reminds me of Tiffany and company. Is it a severed finger or a beautiful bracelet? You don't know. You don't. Those who wish me dead. Movie review. Oh boy. Angelina Jolie, incredibly talented and beautiful. But can we just be honest and also say not skinny, but Frail? Like when she goes every year to adopt a new kid out of a foreign country? The starving kids, they're feeding her, right? And I only bring this up because in Those Who Wish Me Dead, she plays a firefighting, parachuting badass. Which... <clears throat> Was Charlize Theron not available? And this is not skinny shaming, dude. I don't do that kind of... That's garbage. I don't do that. But there is something to be said about looking the part. I would love to be the next James Bond. But I know there's no, I know there's not enough CGI in the world to make that happen. So yeah, it's distracting when you see her. And listen, the filmmakers did her no favors by making her look like she's on a modeling shoot half the time. Even when she's fighting fires. That aside, her acting, as always, is great. It is. So is the rest of this awesome cast. And the movie really does try to hit some emotional beats. It does. Try. I just didn't care enough about anyone to feel it. And I'm not saying Those Who Wish Me Dead is like a horrible movie. It was just better when it came out in 1993. Speaking of stuff that came out at the wrong time, Jupiter's freaking legacy, dude. I'm sorry. Jupiter's legacy. Series review. I know what I'm doing is stupid. I just roll with it. Jupiter's legacy is a Netflix series that you should definitely binge if you're going to watch it. I say this because if you do one episode at a time, you're not going to finish this, dude. Because this is interesting, but it is a slow start, too. And Jupiter's Legacy follows two timelines. Present time as superheroes, and depression era flashbacks of before they were superheroes. The thing is, once the flashback stuff starts moving, it's actually more interesting than the superhero stuff. And that's not a good sign, man. No. As for the superhero stuff, Jupiter's Legacy has the cheese of the CW sprinkled with, like, the raunch of the boys. Sounds cool, except the CW and the boys... Both did it better. Jupiter's Legacy also asked some really interesting questions that the boys asked two years ago. Yeah, and I do get that the costumes are comic accurate, but on screen, it, 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 it looks like the actor's wearing costumes. Mm. The coolest guy here doesn't even wear a costume. Good job, dude. And you want to love Jupiter's Legacy. You do. But it just seems generic. Like asking your mom to go get Lucky Charms, and she comes home with like some wizard shit. Mm -mm. No. When does the next season of The Boys come out? I, I can't wait for that. 
A Quiet Place 2. Movie review. The original 2018 hint was directed by John Krasinski, and it was based on a story by the very talented duo Beck and Woods. I actually interviewed Beck and Woods once. This has been the most bizarre interview. Nice guys. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Oof. Now for Quiet Place 2, John Krasinski is doing the directing and the writing. Apparently somebody forgot to tell him that horror sequels are supposed to suck. Because man, A Quiet Place 2 was good. I mean, this isn't a spoiler if you've seen the trailer, but the first 13 minutes, showing day one, freaking badass. And dude, from the loud opening to the most silent moments, the tension is back. And it's so good. There are also some great moments going back and forth, showing things through the, like the deaf daughter's perception. So then the audience watching it is deaf too. Super cool, and it just adds to the tension. And everyone is awesome here, of course, but Melissa is it. Melissa Sint Simmons. And everyone is awesome here, but Melissa Sint Simmons? Melissa, Melissa Sint, M Maleficent. No, that's freaking Angelina again. Melissa Sint Simmons. Millicent Simmons. Do you see what happens when you don't record for a while? Millicent Simmons is fantastic and a standout. They're also joined this time by Killian Murphy, who's great at everything. I love the guy. And yeah, he kills it here too. Them two actually have to do something together that I'm not going to get into. But yeah, obviously they're great together. Now I heard somewhere in love with like the ending. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. As long as we are not waiting a long time for Quiet Place 3. You guys need to bang that shit out now. Yes. And yeah, A Quiet Place 2 isn't as intimate or focused as the first one. But that's what's going to happen when you leave the farmhouse to go explore. And I gotta tell you, this doesn't even feel like a part two to me. It doesn't. It feels more like a natural continuation of the first. Like if they filmed The Quiet Place to be three hours and they were just like cut it in two and be like, okay, part one and part two. That's what it feels like and it's freaking great. Yes. <laughs> Things heard and seen. Movie review. Is it heard and seen, seen and heard? Dude, this was horribly received by critics and audiences. And until like the last 15 minutes, I, I, I didn't know why. The movie looks good. All the actors are doing great. The tone, the mood, the story. It's like a ghost story slash character driven slow burn. I cared about the characters and I, I was into it. Then came the last 15 minutes. Things started to get a little bit like choppy. Maybe this should have been like a six part series because there's a lot of character exploration going on to wrap up in two hours. Yeah, this must be why people hated it. No, no, it wasn't. The last 10 minutes of this movie is so bad. I suddenly hated myself for watching the first hour and 40 minutes. And I like ambiguity. That's not the problem here. No, it was just horribly shown and done. You also get the worst CGI ever in history. That came out of nowhere. Like, I, 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 I have no words. If Nicolas Cage, who isn't in the movie, came out of nowhere on the screen, pregnant, and freaking gave birth to a baby unicorn, that shit would make more sense than this. And it would be a better movie. What the f***? The Conjuring 3. Or, The Devil Made Me Do It. Whatever. That thing. Yeah, movie review. I love ghost stories, hauntings, all that stuff. And I'm a huge fan of the first Conjuring. It was intimate, dark, super freaking creepy. Plus with the exception of the last 10 minutes, when they went all like Hollywood with the possession, flipping her over and stuff like that, the first Conjuring felt real. I like the second Conjuring, just not as much as everyone else. To me, ghosts with English accents sound too proper and polite to be scary. Also Conjuring 2 went a little more Hollywood than the first one. And I get that you have to Hollywood things but to me, less is more in this area, and I just find the true story stuff creepier. Enter Conjuring 3, or Conjuring the Devil When Me Do It. That, yeah, when I first saw it, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's not as intimate as the first two because it's not in a house, which would normally be a negative to me, but Ed and Lorraine going all like X-Files investigating ghost stuff everywhere, I, I, I found it cool. And I'm a huge fan of mysteries. And you can tell there's a lot of Hollywood in this, making it like all theatrical, but I enjoyed the story and was going like full four stars with this. Then I did the internet search of real or fake. Bro, about 80% of this movie is crap. The real case file is such a small part. I mean, seriously? With all the demon shit that you have in your basement, each artifact being its own story, this is the one you went with. But hey, this is still better than The Nun. Yes, wanna see me really shit on a movie? Watch my review of The Nun. I'll put that in the description. 
As for the Conjuring universe, can we just go back to the basics? Maybe do Amityville before Ed and Lorraine travel in a spaceship to go fight Space Ghost in the next one? Yeah, Amityville would be cool. Pretty please? The Woman in the Window. Movie review. Freaking this movie. I read the synopsis and I was like, dude, this sounds interesting because it's my favorite Hitchcock movie ever. Rear Window. And let me tell you, wow, that script. I like cats' tongues. They like Sam. Seriously, how do you have a cast like this and mess things up this badly? How? And they're solid performances, which I can't believe considering the crap that was coming out of their mouths, which was in the script. Amy Adams, I'm convinced she could do anything. After this shit, I want to give her a hug and tell her it's going to be okay. And you can tell the book this is based on must be amazing. But the way the story is told here, it is, it's, it's cringeworthy. And don't get me wrong, the twist slash ending... It's interesting. Unfortunately, I spent the last 90 minutes debating if I should turn the crap off or not. And this is trying to be super creative. It is. But the storytelling, the directing, well, the filmmakers, they must have been on some shit. And how do they get all of these actors to come on board? I'm sorry, but I am renaming this movie Contractually Obligated. Because that is the only explanation for them getting this group. And listen, Woman in the Window, it it is special. Getting my Que Mieda award. Que Mieda, as you all know, is Spanish for slightly disappointed. And I'm done. The 10 of you that see this, can you please like and comment? It's, it's going to be like two comments. But I'm caught up and it feels good. Oh yeah, subscribe and all that other crap. Love you guys and thanks for watching.